father-in-law spent more than 100 days on a ventilator fighting COVID. He's finally better, but others may not be so lucky. We are really concerned in the healthcare community that we are going to reach an epic spike. We are seeing hospital volumes of COVID patients higher than ever before. An already dire situation could soon become even worse. What health professionals are pleading for you to do right now ahead of Christmas and New Year's. Hey, Air Force I was in I had the highest percentage of losses of any military unit in World War II. Lifeline in the hell. A harrowing experience while fighting for our country in World War II. Tonight, a 97-year-old veteran from Indianapolis talks about the war he found himself in as we approach 79 years after the attack on Pearl Harbor and the role Jimmy Stewart played when the cameras weren't rolling. The news at 6 starts now. And good evening and thanks for joining us here on this Friday. I'm Mark Mullins. First at 6 tonight, many hospitals in our area already feeling the strain from an increase in COVID patients are now preparing for another surge. Those who may have been infected over Thanksgiving could start showing symptoms any day now. WRTV's Megan Sanctorum is working for you to find out what hospital administrators are doing to prepare and shares the story of a local family who almost lost a loved one to COVID. It was just so many unknowns and it was really, really scary. More than 100 days on a ventilator and months of recovery. Stephanie Singh's father-in-law is a COVID-19 survivor, but the weeks leading up to his release in September were long. There's so many ups and downs, so um, he would make progress and then take a couple steps back. And again, we were told that he would die and that he wouldn't make it. And that is so scary. Her family is not alone. Healthcare leaders in our area say they're feeling the pinch as COVID hospitalizations increase. Frequently have, uh, you know, more, way more patients holding in the emergency department, waiting for a bed than normal. Uh, many of the hospitals around town, including ours, have been uh, had to be placed on diversion for uh, emergency uh, services. Uh, off and on over the last couple weeks. The vice president of medical affairs at Franciscan Health says the worst could be yet to come. Probably still a little early from when we would expect to see uh, the additive effect of Thanksgiving on top of what we're already experiencing. The chief of medicine at Eskenazi Health saying the same thing. We are anticipating more patients coming in post Thanksgiving. Uh, that can be anywhere from seven up to two weeks after the holiday before we would expect to see that. We've been preparing for weeks with flexing beds to make them more ICU capable. We are making sure we have staff on hand and ready. Doing everything they can, hoping those who do come in recover like Singh. The week of Thanksgiving, um, he got in the driver's seat and he drove us home. Three months ago, he was not breathing on his own ago he was not walking his own and now he's behind a driver's seat you know and that that was just so amazing but she knows not everyone is as lucky I'll try to do everything you can to keep your family your loved ones and yourself safe it's because you don't want to be in the situation we were in you know and um, there's a lot of guilt when you when you may have been the reason one of your family members got COVID and I'm um, not father-in-law for five months being told he was going to die was really really scary just don't be that family you know working for you megan sanctorum wrtv indiana along with much of the country is already dealing with record-breaking covid 19 numbers a very high amount of new cases and new deaths and like you just heard we still don't know the true impact the thanksgiving holiday will have on people in indiana and now we're approaching christmas hanukkah and new year's very common times for get-togethers we spoke to the nursing director of infection prevention at IU Health, Kristen Kelly, and she talks about what is most concerning to many healthcare workers right now and what you should be doing to protect yourself and others. Um, the thing that has us most concerned is we didn't have a lull over Thanksgiving. We had continued to rise every day before Thanksgiving, through Thanksgiving and after. And now we are seeing record numbers of cases and deaths. This is going to be a tough time for us this month. It is a good time for us to hunker down. Um, I have not really stated that as much as I have lately, but the numbers are really, really concerning. We want to lay low during this month because there are so many people infected with COVID that your chances of going out and getting it are very high right now. Kelly says you need to always wear a mask and practice social distancing when you're out. Wash your hands often. And this is a popular time for holiday shopping. She says, go to stores at hours when you know that there won't be most crowded. And when you're there, always wear your mask and keep it over your nose and mouth.
Seven a dozen additional COVID-19 related deaths in Indiana and for the second straight day more than 8,000 additional cases. The Indiana Department of Health confirms 84 more people have died with the coronavirus. So far a total of 5,832 Hoosiers have died with COVID-19 since the pandemic began. Data from the Department of Health also shows 8,003 additional cases of coronavirus. So far, 367,329 people in Indiana have been diagnosed with COVID. Well, we've had a pretty nice day today. We're just starting to see that sunset across Indianapolis, a beautiful sunset, a little bit of cloud coverage starting to filter in. We're going to continue to see some cloudy skies this evening before they clear out overnight. 42 right now in Indianapolis, 45 in Muncie. Some areas hit the 50s today, so about 10 degrees above average. What's going on is we have cold air that's going to filter in as we head overnight. We had this disturbance that moved through to the south of Indiana earlier today, but all that did was bring us some cloud coverage, which we are seeing right now across central Indiana. This evening, we'll start to see those clouds filter out by about 9 or 10 p.m. That's when we're going to start to really cool down. By tomorrow morning, we'll be into the 20s. I'll have your full weekend forecast coming up. On Monday, we pause to remember the 2,403 U.S. military members and civilians who were killed when the Japanese attacked Hawaii's Pearl Harbor in 1941. That chaotic and tragic event marked the beginning of U.S. involvement in World War II. Tonight, we sit down with a World War II vet from Indianapolis who remembers his role on the day the war ended. When Robert Pettigo first got a taste of being in the military, he was just a teenager. I was the youngest one on my bomber crew. Now he's 97 and the only living survivor among his other Air Force brethren. It was a gigantic accomplishment, a gigantic sacrifices, but uh, we succeeded. You know, well, we had no choice. You know, it was do or die. Pedigo, an Air Force bombardier, remembers the day when Allied forces finally defeated Germany in what is known as D-Day. In fact, the day before, Pedigo's squad commander, Jimmy Stewart, yes, the one of Hollywood fame, gave Pedigo and other airmen a pep talk before lights out. The afternoon before D-Day, uh, Jimmy called us a uh, squadron of time, four squadrons. He called us a squadron of time out into the middle of a wheat field away from all buildings to brief us about the next morning. And even then, he didn't say what it was, but we'd been anticipating and, and we surmised what it was and we were right. But, and I can pretty much remember his words. It was, he was very brief. And he said, fellas, we got a big mission in the morning. To get to bed early, he said, to be, nobody come going on a red alert. The base was locked down, no, nobody coming or going. So we'd be getting up early, so get your rest. Morning came early at 2.30 a.m. the next day, D-Day. And Pedigo was one of the first up in the air, part of an air assault over Germany. It was my easiest mission, but we lost 12,000 men that day on the beaches. And had it not been for all the bombing we did, we had, uh, we had Germany uh, bombed to the, to the smithereens of the ground before the invasion, so actually D-Day was ready for a mop-up. The U.S. had resisted entering the war, but after the devastation and loss of American lives at Pearl Harbor, the U.S. involvement was inevitable. Pedigo, a treasure himself with spoken word history, wants generations now and in the future to never forget the lives lost and those who gave up so much to end a war. Well, how, how great the sacrifices were to stop it, end it, win it. Hey, uh, Eighth Air Force I was in had the highest percentage of losses of any military unit in World War II. It was like flying into hell. Pedigo speaks from experience when he refers to hell. You see that he survived 30 air battles over Germany. He's 97 now, but the Indianapolis native finally received his diploma from Arsenal Tech High School at the age of 93. COVID-19 has forced many Hoosiers into unemployment as some jobs are disappearing, but a career in coding and technology is holding steady. We'll show you how you can get started and maybe find yourself in a new line of work. 
Can the IU football team keep pace with the Big Ten's best? They'll have to try with a new quarterback this weekend. We have the game Saturday on WRTV, and Brad Brown will have a preview coming up in sports here. And we had a beautiful and unseasonably warm day today. Temperatures hit the low 50s across the area, but we do have a big cool down as we head into the weekend. We are dropping into the 40s, possibly even the 30s in some areas, so get ready for that. We'll have all the details coming up next. If you're watching the news at 6, we'll be right back. Welcome back. A major company in Indiana will be the first new tenant of the old General Motors stamping plant site in Indianapolis. Elanco Animal Health says it will move its global headquarters from Greenfield to the 45-acre site on the southwest corner of downtown. That site has been vacant since GM closed the stamping plant in 2011. Elanco spun off from Eli Lilly last year and makes products to treat diseases in farm animals and pets. Alanco says the move will help it retain more than 1,600 jobs and create up to 575 new jobs over the next decade. The company's headquarters will remain in Greenfield until the new site is completed in the next two to three years. An Indianapolis nonprofit coding academy had to find new ways to function when the pandemic hit. COVID-19 forced 1150 Academy to close its physical doors and give their lessons online. While many Hoosiers are facing unemployment and job changes, Amanda Starantino shows us how a career in coding and technology remains stable and easily accessible. I definitely feared for my job, uh, just like anybody else would um, in the middle of a pandemic. That has been the reality for millions of people this year, many being forced into unemployment and others who choose a more stable career path. 23-year-old Severa Cox was working as a general manager at a national fast food chain. In June, she tried something new by taking a software development course at 1150 Academy. I decided to make the leap into the tech industry because I was looking for um, a better work-life balance and more opportunity for growth. I actually surprised myself um, mainly because a lot of the skills were transferable. Skills like communication, networking, hospitality skills. Um, and of, of course, good old fashioned teamwork uh, was great in the environment. She graduated from the academy in September, immediately became a learning assistant and then quickly landed a job as a software engineer. 1150 Academy teaches software development, cybersecurity, web development, user experience, and will be teaching data science and artificial intelligence. By switching careers and getting into software and web development and cybersecurity, they are able to you know, literally double their compensation, not just for a job, but for a career. And what we find is that people find a high level of satisfaction in these careers. 1150 switched to a virtual platform for health and safety and delivered second monitors to all of their students so they could still have an immersive experience in their courses. And with unemployment rates surging, this is a small commitment for something that can lead you onto a stable career path, no matter your background. 90 days, we can literally bring you from wherever you are as a bartender or waitstaff or truck driver, whatever you are, and bring you, if you, if you are interested in, in, and passionate about tech and problem solving and, you know, puzzles, that sort of thing, then you'll probably resonate really well with what we teach in 90 days. You know, our average starting salary is in the high 50s, and after the first year, people are getting, you know, and, and second year, 20% raises. So many of our people that are out two or three years are in the 80s, 90s, even six digits. And that is transformational for people's lives. That's why we are about this. Transform people's lives. Give them more opportunities. Working for you in Indianapolis, Amanda Starantino, WRTV News. 1150 offers intro classes every other week to allow you to try it out before committing for 12 weeks. Hoosier veterans are also encouraged to try 1150 Academy. The company partnered with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation and its Hiring, Hero, how we, excuse me, Hiring Our Heroes campaign to offer fully paid schooling for veterans with the GI Bill. As the pandemic continues and cases of COVID-19 rise, local restaurants that are in desperate need of your support this holiday season are committing to keep you and your family safe. A month-long campaign called Dine Safe December is aiming to re-educate customers on the Hoosier hospitality promise. As part of the commitment, hundreds of businesses from the hospitality and restaurant industry are promising to follow safety guidelines from the CDC as well as local and state governments. 
It launched back in April when restaurants first reopened. But Dine Safe December is a reminder of everything restaurants are doing, including spacing out tables six feet, employees wearing masks, and sanitation practices. The ultimate goal of the new campaign is to encourage Hoosiers to let restaurants do the cooking this holiday season, whether it's dining in or getting carry out. Restaurants at this time aren't seeing any holiday parties, no holiday catering. Uh, there's no office lunch. There's no uh, office cocktail reception. So we're not seeing that type of business. Uh, we also have seen in the month of November with each week a uh, decline in customer um, uh, foot traffic and also uh, uh, revenue. Your traditional sit-down, family dining, independent restaurant is being absolutely obliterated. At visitindiana.com slash promise, you can find all of the businesses committed to the Hoosier hospitality promise. In September, data from the Indiana Restaurant and Lodging Association revealed that 41% of Indiana restaurants did not expect to survive the next six months. The president and CEO says conditions have only gotten worse since then. New data will be released on Monday. And we had a really nice day today, those temperatures above average, but now we are going to see some changes as we head into the weekend. A big cool down on the way. It's going to be dry as well, and we're really in store for a quiet stretch of weather. We're going to see calm conditions over the next seven day forecast. Next week, though, the good news is there is a warming trend as we head into the next weekend. So looking at today, we did hit a high right around 50 degrees, so just about 10 degrees above average. Usually we're in the low 40s this time of year. Our lows, though, so we're right on track and that's where we're going to be tonight as well. We're dropping back into the 20s. Next week we'll see some cooler lows to start the week. What's going on on our satellite and radar as we had this low pressure system that creeped just to the south of Indiana. We didn't see any precipitation from that. That all stayed to the south, but we did see a lot of that cloud coverage filter in throughout the day and we're continuing to see some of those clouds right now, but a lot of that is going to clear out overnight. We're going to be left with clearer sky by the overnight hours, which is going to allow some cooler air that's going to start filtering in from the north. That's going to start reaching the surface, so we're going to see those temperatures dropping into the 20s. And that's just the start of the cool down. That chilly air is really going to make its way into the area as we head into Saturday and Sunday. Highs will only be into the low 40s. Tomorrow morning, though, we're starting in the 20s across the area. We'll see partly to mostly cloudy skies to start, and then we'll start to clear out as we head through the day and we are going to see some sunshine. So that's the good news. Even though it's going to be cool and dry, highs in the low 40s both Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, we will see some sunshine by the afternoon. Sunday, a little bit more cloud coverage and that's just due to a disturbance that's going to move through Sunday afternoon. Could bring us a few flurries overnight into Monday morning, but not expecting a lot of precipitation from that. Looking ahead this evening, we're dropping into the 40s by about 8 o'clock and then we're dropping into the 30s by mid night will reach those 20s by tomorrow morning. Looking ahead through the seven day forecast, 30s on Monday, and then we're going to see that slow climb rather as we head into the 40s next week, 50 by Friday. Well, some important games this weekend for both the Colts and the IU football team and the Pacers new season will be at an empty home arena. Brad Brown has all of the details and a look ahead. The Colts begin December with five very important games ahead of them. The first of those this Sunday at Houston could begin very quickly to formulate the Colts' postseason prospects. It really comes down to just the details. You know, it comes down to the, the things that we that you know win football games from not turning the football over, uh, the technique and fundamentals. I mean, all those things that we talk about all the way back to training camp, they tend to, to rear their head again in, in, in a huge way here down the stretch uh, for what, you know, ends up costing you or helping you find a way to win. Indy is having by most measures a good season, but their 7-4 and four record is only good enough for the seventh and final playoff spot in the AFC. The teams right behind them aren't going to just fade away. The Ravens already have a win over the Colts, and Indy plays the Raiders in Las Vegas next Sunday. Some big additions this week. DeForest Buckner, Danico Autry, and Jonathan Taylor are back from the COVID-19 reserve list. All were significant absences in the game this past Sunday against Tennessee. It was amazing. Um, you know, the, the Nicholas has been playing some great ball uh, before before the situation he was in. And, you know, I'm just looking forward to, you know, coming back out. And, you know, especially, you know, him being a dominant force on the field. You're watching the game. You wish you were out there. I mean, if you're winning, you're like, man, I wish I was out there, you know, getting a win with, with the guys. And then if you're out there losing, you're like, man, I wish I was out there fighting with those guys, trying to scrap and get the win. So 
I mean, it, it, it was tough. IU's next Big Ten battle has them going to Wisconsin on Saturday. Hard to figure what to make of the 18th-ranked Badgers. They've had three of six games canceled by COVID-19 outbreaks. Only one home game, that was the opener. IU coach Tom Allen is not worried about anything but his own guys, a formula that has worked really well so far. We don't blink. Um, that's a, a program quality that we have built into this place since I've been here. And it's uh, 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 a mental toughness a physical toughness that it takes. Uh, we have challenged our guys. You know, everybody's got to be 1% better. The injury to quarterback Michael Penix Jr. moves Jack Tuttle into the starting position for the first time. A massive opportunity for the sophomore to make a huge impression. Every week I try and prepare like I'm the starter. And every week we kind of put earmuffs and blinders on to the outside and focus on the internal and our opponent. A reminder that you can watch IU in Wisconsin Saturday on WRTV. Kickoff for Madison set for just after 3.30. Indiana's last win at Wisconsin was back in 2002. The NBA has released the first half of the new season schedule. The Pacers will begin with no fans at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. The home opener December 23rd against the Knicks. Five of the first six will be home games. The team says there will be no public ticket sales to start the season, but they are looking forward to welcoming fans back in January. Details on those plans will be announced in the weeks ahead. Brad Brown, WRTV Sports. Bit of a cool down this weekend. Temperatures in the 40s will climb close to 50 degrees by next Friday. Up next, our WRTV World News Tonight with David Muir. Then Alyssa and I will see you back here for the news at 7.